So I cannot make the proof. It's, uh, it's really um, extremely long and uh, complicated. But uh, I can give two insights. So let me repeat the statement here. Let x be smooth projective. Over a field k of characteristic zero. And uh, assume we have uh, inabla, which is rigid, a flat connection. And in fact, we will add uh, one little uh, more assumption, which is maybe not so little. We assume that this is cohomologically rigid. Cohomolo rigid and uh, this is saying so ie it means the following as uh, explained uh, last time it means that the corresponding moduli point so if I look at the moduli point of the connection which I denote by in a blind brackets in the moduli space of connections. So here I'm cheating a little bit, this point, so here and over k. So this is a k point of the moduli space. So this means that uh, not only it is isolated, but in fact it's smooth. It's a smooth. So smooth refers here to cohomologically. Uh, isolated, isolated refers, of course, to rigid. So let me write like this, isolated point. So there is this extra assumption, and uh, it is called cohomologically rigid because it is a cohomological condition, and in fact, I can write it down. This is equivalent to saying that um, so we never did any cohomology together, but I just write it as a blackboard here for those uh, who know uh, um, Durham cohomology. We introduce, is the, introduce the Durham complex, but here's Durham cohomology. So this is the Durham cohomology on X of the flat connection, which is a trace-free endomorphism of E. So I just write it as a black spot here and I don't uh, comment any further. So we assume that X is a cohomologically rigid connection, then um, it's uh, maybe I write here, I apologize, uh, it is uh, integral. And uh, let us recall why, what integral means here, i.e. The uh, underlying monodromy representation, uh, which is given by the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence, so that means we fix a complex embedding of the field here, so complex embedding. Then we know by the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence that the flat bundle um, is the same in quotation mark via the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence as a complex linear representation of the topological fundamental group. And then the statement is in fact, it factors through G L R of O L where L is a number field inside of C. So, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much for the question. <laughs> I apologize. Thank you for the question. I uh, I I cannot uh, hear what you say. 
Well, uh, this was the previous lecture. I was explaining that uh, his conjecture contains his conjecture as a subconjecture. So we prove the subconjecture under this slightly, or slightly, or maybe not slightly, uh, stronger assumption. Namely, we replace rigidity by cohomological uh, rigidity. So thank you very much. This is saying that the moduli point is smooth. So uh, as I said, I cannot, uh, I cannot even give the whole uh, light fadan, the whole plan of the proof, because it's uh, very intricate. But let me give you uh, two, two uh, ingredients of the proof. And before I describe them, let me recall from the previous lectures and of course, this statement is a relatively elementary statement, and, uh, but uh, the words I, I have used already in the second lecture are not by no means uh, elementary, but nonetheless, uh, let, me re let, me replique, let me repeat at least a course a way to describe the idea behind the proof, I mean the whole light fadan, and then let me focus on two ingredients. So recall from the previous lecture, the following. So uh, the uh, one first proves that uh, the peak curvatures of enambla are nilpotent. And we had never defined precisely what picobachers are, but we had defined what it means that they are nilpotent. And uh, this meant that uh, the mod P connections we obtain for um, all uh, close points of a scheme of definition of finite type over Z have the property that the connection is filtered and the associated graded connection is spun by flat sections. So uh, this is one of the two points I'm going to discuss here, and I'll write here, see later. Then I had said that uh, the fact, uh, once we know that the peak of are not potent, then uh, this is saying, another way of saying, is that the um, inabla viewed on piadic varieties, so K is any piadic field, so uh, uh, which is obtained by saying that the whole situation, as already recalled, is defined over a scheme of finite type here. So S is a finite type over Z, and then uh, the connection is defined over S and then we take a k-point of S. So uh, then this is saying that inabla on xk is an isocrystal. And then the second step is to prove that this isocrystal is endowed with a Frobenius structure. Once we know this, then uh, we look at the mod p uh, variety. We go back to the mod p variety. Here, this is a periodic variety. Uh, so all the p, I mean, uh, many, many periodic varieties. Now we look at many, many mod p varieties. So we look at xs, where the residue field of s is finite uh, by definition. And uh, then uh, we have these isocrystals, and uh, then uh, we um, apply the solution to uh, De Lin's conjecture on the existence of companions. Existence of LID companions. 
And this is the second class. So here it's a, it's a very, uh, in fact, it's a really a very deep uh, concept here. And this is the second class where I am going to comment here. See later. Uh, the existence of the uh, Eladi companion to uh, Frobenius um, isochrist uh, overconvergent isocrystals, here it's necessarily overconvergent because X is proper. Uh, then this is a very uh, recent theorem of uh, Abbe and myself. And then all this uh, holds uh, uh, under the uh, rigidity assumption. So for one, two, three, we need only the rigidity assumption. But what we need now, in addition, is that the associated eladic shifts here, so the companions eladic shifts, viewed as eladic shifts on the piadic variety. So, and uh, the way to view them as uh, eladic shift on the piadic variety uh, is using uh, grotendic specialization homomorphism. Then one shows that those have to uh, are uh, rigid in a certain sense. And this is where one uses uh, the condition that we have cohomological rigidity. Because the companion sees, uh, yesterday night I saw that you had a lecture on the L functions, and then the companion. Uh, the companions here have precisely the properties that they preserve the L function. And as a consequence, the cohomological rigidity for the isocrystal transposes to a condition on cohomological rigidity on the LADI companion. So for four here, one needs cohomological rigidity. And I'm not going to comment on this. So this was uh, the schedule here, the agenda, I apologize. And uh, let me now uh, say one word on one and on uh, three. And for this, we have like uh, one hour or something. Oh, this is wait. So now to comment, so now we, we are what add one. So maybe I erase here. And now we come back to more uh, elementary uh, mathematics. And uh, now I will be forced to introduce really the definition of the peak curvature. So far, we could avoid. And it is defined like that, as follows. So we have a connection. So now we are in characteristic P. So uh, X is over a field K of characteristic P. And uh, we may even assume that the field is perfect because, in fact, in our application, the field is finite, but that doesn't play any role in the definition here. And uh, then, uh, um, of course, having a connection here is to say that whenever we give ourselves a low theta, which is a local section of the tension bundle, and then we contract here via theta, so then we land in E. Then we have an operator here, which is not all linear. It's just an uh, abelian operator, an, an operator uh, of uh, commutative uh, uh, shifts of uh, or vector spaces, if you like. And uh, then the peak curvature is defined like this for any theta. So uh, let's say theta. 
then we iterate p times this operation here. And then, because we are in characteristic p, it is also the case that when we iterate p times theta, it is still a local section of the tangent bundle. And consequently, we can, uh, we can uh, uh, define the difference here. And this difference is precisely the obstruction for the connection to be uh, compatible with the piece power inside of the tension bundle. So this is clearly an operation which exists only in characteristic P. And uh, we, uh, one can compute explicitly that uh, this defines for us, and this is where the word someone, one of you, was asking me why is the term curvature here? You remember that the curvature of a connection, it is a, you take the connection, which is not all linear by the very definition, you iterate it with a proper sign convention, and then you obtain a linear map from the vector bundle to omega 2 tensors of vector bundle. So the curvature is a linear operator which is constructed out of a non-linear operator. And the P curvature does the same thing because it just so happens that uh, when we make this difference here, you kill the non-linear part of the definition of the, uh, of the uh, curvature. And in addition, it's not completely linear, it is P linear. So this means that uh, this uh, psi here, in fact, defines for us a linear map from E to Frobenius pullback omega 1 x prime tensor E. And now I have to write again what is x prime. So I have done that a few times on the board here. We have our variety in characteristic P. On the base, we can perform the Frobenius operation. And then we can um, define the fiber square, which is uh, denoted by prime here. So this is by definition the fiber square. So x prime is by definition x tensor k over k, where the map here is a Frobenius of k. So let's write Frobenius of k. That means at the level of the, at the level of the field, it sends lambda to lambda to the power p. And then this one factors the so-called absolute Frobenius here. And, uh, and we denote by f here, the, this is called the relative Frobenius. And at the level of functions, the big, uh, uh, as already explained, I, I write it uh, very briefly, so let me write like this uh, as a symbol, the functions on x, here's the functions on x prime, and here again the function on x. The map from here to here is the absolute Frobenius, so it sends a function phi to its piece power. And then the map from here to here, it sends the coordinates x primes to x to the power p. And uh, then the map from here to here, it sends uh, the coefficients to the piece power of the coefficients. So, uh, so we have this, and consequently now comes, uh, so this is very classical, this has been an analyzed by Nick Katz in a very um, foundational uh, article in the 70s. And uh, so when we rewrite what we have written here, this means that the peak of a church here is a section, so the peak of a chair is in fact a section because it's a linear map as written here. Consequently, it is a global section on X of Frobenius pullback of omega 1 X prime tensor the endomorphism of E. But now more is true. 
So, and uh, as I said, I, I can repeat what we had said for uh, last time. I just do one half. The vanishing of this by uh, Frobenius descent, which is called Cartier descent, is equivalent to saying that the connection in here is spanned by flat sections. So now more is true, and this is due to cats. Namely, on the sheaf uh, f upper star omega 1 x prime tensor endomorphism of E, we have a connection. Why? So on, this, on E, we have the connection nabla, and consequently on the endomorphism of E, we have a connection which is endomorphism of nabla. And now, on any Frobenius pullback of a shift, we have the so-called canonical con uh, connection, which is described, <coughs> which is a unique connection. And in fact, which is flat. <coughs> unique connection which has a property that its flat section, its flat sections, Uh, consists of the abelian subsheaf omega 1 x prime. So on this tensor product, we have, uh, we have a connection, and the theorem of Katz here, or it's in fact a remark, is that the peak of a church here is in fact a global section, which is, so let me denote here this tensor connection by, for example, D. And then uh, uh, Katz is telling us that the peak of a share, in fact, is flat. So what is the consequence here? So let me write this as a consequence. So we can take the symmetric powers of this, of, um, of this peak of a share, and then we can take uh, the traces of the symmetric powers. So we can define... So define, now we take a sim n, so for any n, a natural number, which is maybe not zero, we define sim n of the peak of H, and this sim n, and from it, the, the trace, so the, when we define sim n, it's going to, because, because this is a shift of algebra, so we can define sim n. So we learn as it is a global section of sim n of what is written here. And uh, then we can take the trace. So sim n is going to be sim n here, uh, Frobenius inverse of uh, sim n of the one form tensor the endomorphism. We can take the trace. And the trace is going to learn, it's going to be a global section on x of sim omega 1 x prime and Frobenius inverse and from it the flat sections. But now <coughs> the connection on this Frobenius inverse of a shift here is just a canonical co uh, connection restricted to it and then the by Frobenius distance those flat sections are precisely the sections on x prime of omega uh, of uh, sim n omega 1 x prime. So this is fantastic because this defines for us so def defines, I apologize, defines for us a map which one proves to be really an algebraic map which is called the Hitching map and denoted by chi Durham from the modular space of connections and our characteristic p variety, let's say of rank R, to, to the affine space here, which is defined over K, and the points of which are precisely the symmetric functions. So let me write here A prime, so this is over K, and uh, 
where A prime has the properties that it's defined like this. So A prime over K is the affine space, which is uniquely defined by saying that its points, let me just write the K points here, A prime of K, this is precisely the sum from 1 to uh, R of H0 X prime sim n omega 1 x prime. In fact, one proves that this uh, fantastic uh, kitchen map in characteristic P, which goes from the modular space of connections to this affine space here, is in fact proper, so it's even projective. But uh, it is part of our discussion here. But uh, clearly, uh, well, but nonetheless, it gives, uh, it gives an impression because uh, it is telling us that this modular space here is not, uh, is not proper, but um, the defect of properness is uh, coming uh, from, uh, from this map here. So now, the, uh, the point now, the point of the, uh, the point of our uh, discussion here is to prove that the rigidity <coughs> in characteristic zero implies that uh, here I swallow a lot of uh, mathematics uh, just uh, to write things like this, implies that in fact the value the value of uh, um, so, I, I claim that rigidity uh, implies, uh, and this is what we have to show, and I will comment on why this is what we have to show, that the value under this character map here of Hitching of the moduli point, so this is rigidity of inner blanc, implies that uh, this chi here is zero. So, this is precisely saying that psi of inabla here is nilpotent. And uh, this is clear why it is precisely saying this. This is because uh, uh, we had said uh, um, uh, I had defined nilpotent by saying that uh, psi is nilpotent or equivalently the connection is filtered so that on the associated gradient it is spun by uh, flat sections. And uh, the nilpotency here is just saying that the characteristic polynomial of the peak of here uh, is zero, uh, is, uh, has um, all the eigenvalues are zero. So this means that uh, the characteristic polynomial here, so the symmetric functions are, the traces of the symmetric functions are zero, so it lands here. So this is precisely the condition here. And now, how does one prove this? So uh, to prove this, one assumes that it's not the case. So let us assume for a second that it was not the case. So if not, then, Chi de Ram of our moduli point is not zero. So we are in the base, uh, this, uh, this uh, affine space here is called the uh, characteristic P Hitching base. Hitching base. So if it was not the case, <coughs> then our uh, connection here would uh, lie in a fiber which is not above zero. And uh, now uh, we uh, use, in fact, uh, um, a theory which started with the work of Bezrukovnikov and Braverman. And uh, which went on notably with the work of August Vologotsky.
I apologize, I'm writing Latin here, and with the work of Groschenik, oh, I put E here, with the work of Groschenik, and uh, according to which one can uh, understand here a, co a connection, the datum of a connection, so not at the level, at the geometric level, that means not at the point of a multiply, but as an object in a category. So uh, the category of Inabla, I just write like this, I'm very loose here, is the same as the category of, uh, um, and now I write here D, but the D is not the differential operator, it's, uh, I just write here, Azumaya algebra. On the cotangent space <coughs> to x prime, a module, so a module, which is coherent on spectral varieties. So here I'm very extremely loose. On spectral varieties. And uh, I'm very, very loose, but uh, let me tell you nonetheless a tiny bit of the idea which is behind here. So if... So when we take a point of the hitching base, any point of the hitching base, a yields of the called spectral variety, which I don't write down because uh, it, uh, it, it is useless for our purpose here, but it's a spectral variety, so let's say um, x lower a, and this lies, or maybe x prime lower a, <coughs> I'm sorry, and this lies in the cotangent bundle to x, and, uh, and this is finite, uh, yeah. And uh, le let me just write like this, I'm very loose. And um, the uh, datum of a connection is the same as the datum of a shift here, a cohe all coherent shift. But uh, in addition, which is endowed, with an action of an Azumaya algebra, which I don't write. I apologize, I'm, uh, I'm loose here. But all I want to say is that uh, this, this uh, equivalence of category here transforms, so it transforms, so let me just say philosophically, it transforms non-linear objects, which are connections, which are connections, into linear objects. So if we want to derive a contradiction to the fact that the peak curvature is not zero, one has to prove that this linear object here deforms. So it should deform if A, which is a value of the hitching map on the moduli point of the connection, if A is not zero, and this is ultimately a consequence of the work of August Vologotsky. Ultimately. So this is uh, implied, this is implied by August Vologotsky. So the, the, the message I want to convey here so uh, technically it is a bit involved, but the message I want to convey is that uh, this uh, peak curvature here, which we have defined, define, uh, defines a hitching map here, some moduli, uh, Durham moduli uh, to this hitching base, with the property that we can analyze uh, those subjects which are here 
purely in linear terms and not in non-linear terms. And the fact that we can analyze them in linear terms enable us to, um, to control the deformation behavior. And ultimately, the contradiction is going, uh, coming to the work of August Vologotsky, which are telling us that in the neighborhood of zero here, so I don't explain how to come back to zero, in the infinitesimal neighborhood of zero up to the order p minus one, then this Azumaya algebra in some sense is going to split, and that will enable us to deform the object, which is a contradiction to the fact that in characteristic zero it cannot deform uh, to, um, to an infinitesimal order, uh, let's say n, where n grows. And here p is randomly chosen, so as p is grows, then we will produce a contradiction. So this is uh, one kind of uh, mathematical thought here, and now in the remaining time, let me devote uh, the discussion to my beloved topic, that's the topic of companions. And uh, we have three quarters of an hour, so I will try in these 45 minutes first to explain what, our what, is the, what was the Lin's conjecture and what remains to be proven from it. And, uh, maybe, and I'm not going to tell you um, in details how we really use uh, the existence here, but uh, so uh, let me show you the Lin's original conjecture. So now, so, companions. So maybe I should say it started with the Lin's conjectures in Veltu. So, um, yeah, how to present this? So let us assume, so the Lin's conjecture was, uh, let us assume X is a smooth, uh, well, in fact, he doesn't assume smooth, it's a very important thing, so he does assume X is normal. Uh, variety, so really a finite tab, so let me write variety, and connect it, in fact, geometrically connect it. Over a finite field. And um, what he proves using class field theory is that uh, if we take an uh, irreducible, so let V be an irreducible uh, L addict shift. So L is a prime which is different from P. So P is a characteristic of FQ. Uh, then if we take an irreducible analytic shift, and uh, then we look at its determinant. So then it's, uh, by the very definition, it's a character of the etal fundamental group of X S somewhere uh, to uh, Q L bar star. So maybe when I say L addict shift, I mean really Q L bar L addict shift. So, so in particular, when I say irreducible for Q L bar L addict shift is a stronger condition than saying uh, irreducible on an uh, L addict shift, it doesn't split after a finite extension of L here. So then this determinant is finite or not finite, but what it proves is that one can always, uh, so finite or not, here I haven't said anything. Finite, I mean finite order. But uh, he, when a class field theorist is telling us that there exists always a character, so let me call it chi, from pi 1 et al. I just write pi 1 et al here to QL bar star, such that 
if we post-compose V as this character which comes from the base, then this one has finite determinant. So finite means finite order. And then he conjectures that, uh, so he conjectures that, uh, so let V be irreducible, I abbreviate here by irreducible, and assume that the determinant of V is finite. Then he conjectures first that um, V has weight zero. So this means, so wait, wait. Weight V is zero. And this is to say, so let me write IE. It says that if we take any, so we have a representation of the fundamental group. So if we take any close point, so for any x in x close point, then uh, we can take a lift of Frobenius, of the geometric Frobenius. So this is geometric Frobenius of uh, x. We can lift it. Uh, to the etal fundamental group of X. And consequently, it acts. So this leaf acts on the geometric fiber over X, on a geometric fiber over X. So X bar is a geometric point over X. This action is defined up to conjugacy. So well defined up to conjugacy. And because it's well defined up to conjugacy, then the characteristic polynomial is well defined. So we can define a determinant of one minus T uh, geometric Frobenius acting on Vx bar, and it's well defined, so it's a polynomial with QL bar coefficients and with variable t. So he proves that, uh, in fact, this is always, there's always a number field here, so let me call it Ex number field. And then, uh, to say that uh, the weights are zero is to say that uh, for any complex embedding of this number field, so complex embedding, then the uh, complex absolute value with, uh, which we uh, obtain via this complex embedding, let's say yotta, then yotta of the eigenvalues here, um, are one. Okay, so this means uh, weight zero. So this is the first uh, thing he uh, conjectures. And this has been proven on curves, so before I go on, so on curves, and curves means here normal curves, that means, uh, because we have a perfect field, the normal curve is the same as a smooth curve. Uh, this has been proven by, the, by uh, Lafort to be true. as a consequence of the Langlands correspondence. And uh, one can uh, propagate via Lefschetz type theorem the, um, the result uh, from curves to higher dimensional varieties. But here, in fact, uh, Laforgue uh, uh, writes this, but uh, is, is a mistake. Uh, there's a mistake if the, in the big uh, article by Laforgue, and uh, this has been corrected later on uh, by Delin, by Drinfeld, also by us. So uh, this is true. So weight zero is true. So uh, this suggests here 
Mathieu, si tu suggères ça, ça c'est la dictée, ça suggère. Ça c'est un of Mathieu, c'est un of geometric origin in the definition, the definition which I gave in the previous lecture of geometric origin. And what does that mean of geometric origin? Maybe I make a note here, but it just suggests. So what in uh, in uh, in parentheses like this? It suggests that there exists a U in X with the properties that there is a Y over U which is smooth projective. Let's say F such that V. In fact, it's a subquotient of, let me just write uh, for short, of uh, Gauss-Mannin uh, associated to Eladic homology. So, of R n f lower star of QL bar for some n. Some natural number n here. Okay, so now the second, <coughs> I'm sorry, the second part of the conjecture. Second part of the conjecture is that uh, there is here, I have written EX, so this number field here depends on X. So the link predicts that uh, in fact there is a number field. which captures all the coefficients of those local characteristic polynomials. Those polynomials here, let me denote them by f lower v at the point x and t. So those are called local characteristic polynomials. Then she predicts that the local characteristic polynomials have all coefficients in an e here, which is a number field and which does not depend on x. So there is an E here which contains all the EX. So this is really, um, and of course, if the sheaf is really of geometric origin with this definition, this is going to be the case. And uh, this, is, uh, uh, this has been proved recently by the mean. So I should say it follows, so if X is a curve again, a smooth curve, then uh, this uh, follows again from uh, the foundational, uh, from the work of Laforgue. Um, on the Langlands uh, correspondence. And in higher dimension, Then uh, this is uh, this has been proven by Delin himself, and uh, this is uh, quite remarkable because uh, Delin finally proves that uh, there is a degree. So um, he says uh, the, uh, he proves that in fact v is entirely determined. You know, by Chebotarev, I should have said, by Chebotarev, uh, I write down here, if we use a Chebotarev, uh, not if we use, we use a Chebotarev theorem, and Chebotarev is telling us that V is determined, so let's say V is deter, uh, determined by all Fx Vt, and this is Chebotarev. But what the line proves is that uh, it is determined, so the line, it is determined by only finitely many of those, that means one can bond the degree in X. And in fact, it's remarkable, he bonds it very explicitly, and this very explicit bond enables him later on to prove something much stronger, which, which we are not going to use, so I'm not going to discuss this. So bonds the degree of the necessary x. Okay. 
So that's number two. Now come to the companion, this is number three. And, uh, and the word is also, the word companion is, uh, to my knowledge, is also the word of the lean, terminology of the lean. And then he predicts number three. He predicts uh, that the, um, if we fix a V, as before, so which is irreducible and which has finite determinant. So we are on X normal. Normal, uh, geometry connected, uh, and so forth, I don't repeat. Then, and if we fix, so now comes, uh, yeah, uh, a thunderstorm. So if we fix an isomorphism, so this is an abstract isomorphism between QL bar, uh, uh, abstract what I mean is a field isomorphism. I mean it's algebraic but it's not continuous. <coughs> I apologize. Between QL bar and another QL prime bar. So L can be L prime, and then it's a, it's a, um, automorphism. L could be L prime. So uh, for any L prime, different from P prime. Then it predicts that, uh, so then, they should exist, so question mark, they should exist a V prime, irreducible finite determinant, with the property that uh, its local characteristic polynomials uh, are just obtained uh, as a co conjugates of the characteristic polynomials of, um, of V. So this again for normal curves, that means for smooth curves, is a consequence of La Forgue. So for curves, and by curves I mean really normal curve, or if you like smooth curve of a finite field, then this is a consequence of La Forgue. I cannot hear what you say. I cannot understand what you say. Uh, we were talking on eladic shifts, so uh, the question is for you. I, I was talking on uh, on list shifts, on eladic uh, shifts. So, uh, no, I mean. Uh, from the very beginning, we are talking on GLR, so the question is irre irrelevant. But it's not only the, the, <laughs> the links conjecture for GLN, the whole lectures are for GLN. So, so uh, this is uh, true uh, by La Forgue, and uh, in a remarkable uh, work, Greenfeld. So, uh, the lean here. I forgot to say that he proved it in 2011. And based on the Lin's existence of a number field here, Greenfeld in 2012 proved the conjecture here for X smooth. The Lin uh, predicted for X normal, but uh, Drinfeld proved it for X smooth. And in fact, uh, the, the gap, the discrepancy between the two is quite big. I have one student thinking of this. It's uh, really uh, fascinating, but it's really difficult. And I, I don't predict that we will have a general answer in the, in the days to come, in the immediate days to come. So, uh, so this is true. So this program is true, and it's fascinating, so it gives more substance to the fact that uh, those V should be of geometric origin. So more substance to the prediction that 
that the Vs uh, should be of geometric origin. So should. But if they are of geometric origin, in fact, something more should be true. And this is what Delin also wrote in, a, in, a, in an easy way, or if you like, in a slip, um, sloppy way. He says that there also should be a crystalline side to the story. He's talking on, I mean, he wrote in French, so he's talking on uh, Petit Camarade Cristalin. And, uh, and story is, of course, not a very good uh, mathematical word. This has been made precise by Crew. And Crew predicts, so Crew made uh, Delin's conjecture more precise by predicting that uh, this existence of companions here, so I forgot to say that uh, uh, this one is called companion. Uh, I should say this formulation of the conjecture here with this sigma is not exactly exactly what Delin says, but it is equivalent. This is uh, the way uh, I think uh, myself. So um, this uh, crystalline side of the story here has been made precise by Crew, and uh, Crew said that, uh, and again, I translate in my uh, words, and in so, so here it's a uh, word of uh, myself and uh, Moritz Gertz, and here's the word of myself and uh, Tomoyuki Abe. So if we fix now an abstract isomorphism, a field isomorphism, now with QP bar, so um, then they should be, uh, so uh, they should be, and now let me write M here, which is an F over convergent isocrystal. And clearly, I'm not going to say what an F over convergent isocrystal is, but uh, in our case, it's not too hard. So when we have an F over convergent isocrystal, again, we can restrict it to points, to close points. And again, we can look uh, at the characteristic polynomial now of the, um, of the Frobenius. And... Um, so in general, one looks at the characteristic polynomial of the absolute Frobenius of closed points, but here we have a finite field, so it doesn't really matter, so that's the same information. So we look at, uh, so they are, I, I just say they are, I just write it like this, they are characteristic polynomials, and then they should be a name here with the properties that sigma here is precisely Okay. And vice versa. And also, and also for sigma, which is now an isomorphism, an automorphism of QPPA. And uh, now, uh, this is not a direct consequence for curves. This is not a direct consequence of uh, so smooth curve. It's not a direct consequence of uh, Lafogue. Uh, one needs much more, but the whole program has been performed by uh, uh, Tomoyuki Abe. So one should write here Lafogue plus Tomoyuki Abe. And uh, so it goes both ways. That means to uh, an F over convergent as a crystal, we can assign a um, companion which is eladic, and to an eladic uh, sheaf, one can assign an F over convergent as a crystal. And uh, the, um, uh, what is true is that uh, if we go from P to L, that means if we have written here, then L adic, so if uh, X is smooth, so not in all uh, generality, but if X is smooth, then L adic companions exist. 
uh, with all the package of uh, properties which is requested, and uh, this is a recent theorem of uh, Abby and myself. So, um, in fact, there is one thing I want to mention here to try to make history uh, uh, tied is that uh, uh, the work of Drinfeld here relies, uh, in a strong way I should say that, the work of Drinfeld, and I, I should say that even though here one works uh, with uh, LAD companions to um, uh, F over convergent isocrystals, and they are absent of uh, Drinfeld's considerations here, nonetheless, the construction of the LAD companion here relies uh, partly on, uh, on uh, his theorem. So this is one thing uh, I wanted to say. And then, of course, it relies uh, ultimately on the curve case, which ultimately is a consequence of uh, Lafort theorem. So this is one thing I wanted to uh, underline. And the second thing I wanted to underline, so maybe I just write it here, is that Drinfeld proves this in uh, 2012. It's a magnificent article. And, uh, but partly, it relies on ideas of a young uh, um, German mathematician, uh, Wiesent, who um, unfortunately um, committed suicide. So uh, he died, and he could not uh, finish his uh, ideas. But uh, he's the one who uh, showed uh, how to use curves, uh, I mean, to try uh, to use uh, curves in order to construct higher dimensional representation of the uh, fundamental group. OK, so this is, um, uh, okay. so this is the history here. And uh, this is a history, and let, let me give you one uh, important tool, because it's really a tool of general interest. The interest does not restrict to, um, to this uh, uh, problem here. Oh, before I give the tool, let me make one comment. And then I will give the tool, hopefully time permits. So now one comment on the application. On how we apply or how we use the existence of a LAD companion. You see, uh, I was uh, saying the other day that uh, once we know that the peak of H, uh, we come back to our problem, once we know that the peak of H is nil potent, this is saying that we have an isocrystal. Then we put a Frobenius structure on this isocrystal, which ultimately uh, is a consequence of a reinterpretation of a part of uh, Falting's uh, P. Adic Simpson um, non abelian hot theory as uh, um, developed by three Chinese mathematicians. So maybe I should write their name here. This is uh, Leng Sheng. So, so it's a reinterpretation of uh, Falting's uh, periodic uh, Simpson correspondence. Well, in fact, to put the, uh, I'm lying here a little bit, to put the F structure, we don't really uh, need Falting's, but uh, later on to prove uh, so to prove, to prove, to put the F structure, we don't need the comparison with Faltings, but to show the rigidity, we need 
to show that the uh, F co um, isocrystal which one constructs uh, is uh, rigid in a good sense, uh, one needs a comparison with uh, fighting theory. So I leave the two words here. So this is one thing. Uh, and now, um, the, uh, now I want to, uh, to show, because in fact it, uh, it poses a very uh, deep problem. I think it's not an easy problem. So why does one restrict uh, does one restrict uh, the problem to cohomologically rigid uh, objects? rigid connections. So why is that? It's because I was saying that the cohomologically rigid connection, uh, so we are now in characteristic zero, and then the point is isolated and then it is smooth. And then I was saying that this is equivalent to saying that uh, the Durham cohomology on X of endomorphism of zero of the connection here is zero. So now uh, we have a generic best gen theorem, which in fact is due to uh, cats. For the harm cohomology, And uh, this uh, uh, generic best chance theorem is going to tell us that uh, this uh, uh, property here, let's say star over k, is going to propagate to star over ks, where s are close points. So for any s to s, close point, uh, s, close point, Of maybe not of the S we started with where our problem was defined. S was a finite tab over Z. But for some non-trivial points, are still denoted by X. So we will have vanishing here. So the problem becomes the problem becomes to prove that uh, uh, when we take an elliptic companion, oh. when we take an elliptic companion to our uh, inabla on X over a piadic field. from which I had said earlier on that uh, this datum, the restriction of the connection on p scheme here, is equivalent to the datum of the F as a crystal, then we want to show that the p companions are on, on the mod p variety, so x lower s, of this connection here restricted to X over the periodic field, which I said again, this datum is equivalent to the datum of the, um, of the isocrystal on the mod P variety on X lower S. Then we want to show so we want to show the following. So we have here, I had already announced that we have a Grotendieck specialization homomorphism so this is Grotendieck specialization homomorphism and uh, which exists because X is proper And 
and in fact it's subjective because it's smooth. So now we have a representation here which is irreducible. So this is an because it's subjective, it is an irreducible representation here. So we can view, so can view a V as a irreducible QL bar addict shift on X K. And in fact, one shows that it is geometrically reducible, so I uh, pass the details here. But what we have to show, so have to show, want to show that H1, so le let me write uh, this uh, V here by, uh, as an irreducible uh, V on XK, and uh, we denote it by V low or K, let's say. So what we want to show here, what's right here, what we want to show is that H1 of X lower K of this endomorphism is zero. And uh, in order to make the argument, and of course I, I don't justify why this is what we have uh, to prove, but uh, this is what one has to prove. And now comes, so first by general consideration, again by uh, SGA, this is the same as, a, so I should write K bar here, and uh, this is the same as on a, S bar, so this is S bar over S is a geometric point. This is the same as H1 L addict, so I should put etal here everywhere. So this is uh, L addict uh, from V. And uh, now comes uh, the companion. So uh, we know that uh, the, uh, because of the definition, so now let me write this because it's quite nice, because of the definition of companions, I mean, what is a defining property of a companion is precisely that it preserves the local characteristic polynomials and consequently, by the product formula, I heard yesterday you had precisely this in the lecture by one of you. By the product formula, this shows that the L function is preserved. So I don't detail here, I just write L function of endomorphism zero of inabla N of uh, endomorphism of zero of the companion is the same. So they are the same. And, uh, but the L function is a product of uh, characteristics. It's a product of uh, actions of um, it comes from the, let me just say in one word, it comes from the other characteristics um, of the shift. So let me just write in words. So the L function recognizes the other characteristic together with the Frobenius action. And now, what I was telling you earlier on, the purity, which was the Lin's conjecture number one, in the list I had given, the purity, that means that the V has weight zero, uh, implies, of course, that endomorphism zero of V has also uh, weight zero. And then, because it has weight zero, then the weights of each cohomology of each HI 
euh, let's say Hn, euh, X, S bar, endomorphisme V are different. So this implies, and, and likewise for on the crystalline side, so for the endomorphism of the isocrystal here, zero. And consequently, if H1 on the crystalline side dies, so, die, so uh, does H1 on the L-addict side. Okay, so this is one thing, and now, so this is all I want to say really on the proof, even though it's not completely uh, connected uh, pieces of information. And now let me tell you one thing. Uh, one thing behind here. So behind... Uh, Uh, Dreamfeld's constructions of companions so behind Dreamfeld's construction of LID companions and um, uh, the companions uh, we did from p addict to l addict, once we know on curves, once we know on curves, uh, is, uh, is the existence of a left shed theorem. So let me explain this. So we have like 10 minutes, and it's a beautiful topic in itself. But uh, I mean, I am uh, very uh, sketchy here, but I hope to convey uh, the general idea behind uh, in a precise way, even though it's not detailed. So, uh, so now on this. So now let me finish the lectures here. Uh, by discussing this. So uh, when, uh, when we are over the complex numbers, so if X is smooth, in fact, it does not have to be projective, but a finite type over C, then uh, uh, left sheds proved in fact, with a mistake in it, he proves the following. That uh, there is a whole left sheds package, but I will single out only one information of the left sheds package. Uh, so left sheds reduces higher dimensional variety to surfaces in general, and then in some sense, he reduces to curve in a loser way. So we just uh, adopt the second uh, viewpoint here, and uh, he's saying the following. So we, because we are in characteristic zero, we take a good compactification. And good compactification means that X bar is uh, projective. And then uh, at infinity, X bar minus X is a normal crossing divisor. And then it says the following, that uh, if we take uh, here C bar, which is a complete intersection curve. Which is in good position with respect to infinity. With respect to x bar minus x. And then we look at the shadow of this projective curve to see, so it's smooth. Then it is a case 
that the topological fundamental group of C, I don't uh, write the best points here, subjects to the topological fundamental group of X. Now, this theorem here, it's not true. So this, is, uh, this implies in particular that the um, etal fundamental group does the same thing. So let me write. So this implies in particular that pi 1 etal, which is a pro as discussed uh, in the earlier lecture, uh, which is a profile, uh, thanks to the Riemann existence theorem, which is a profinite completion of the topological fundamental group, then this one subjects to pi 1 etal of x as well. Now, if we go to carry, and this is okay for any uh, best field here, uh, but uh, which has characteristic zero. And uh, one first does it over an algebraically closed field, and then one uses uh, homotopy exact sequence to generalize it to non algebraically closed field. But now, if we go to characteristic P, then it's no longer true. And uh, the best way to think, let me show you. So, for example, if you take A2, and uh, then uh, uh, with, uh, so you take A2, I claim, so A2 would be our X. So there are plenty of good rectifications here, for example, P2 or P1 cross P1 or whatever you want. So claim is there, there is no curve, no curve. So smooth curve means smooth curve here, or if you like smooth curve. Uh, let's say C in A2, so in X here, uh, such that pi 1 etal of C subjects to pi 1 etal of X. And I claim you know that, and how the, show me why it's true. Because uh, uh, if you take any curve, so let us do that. So you take any curve, so it's defined by a function, let's say f. So you take f uh, in A2. So this defines uh, the curve. So the curve is defined by a polynomial in two variables. So A2 is k x y. So f is just here. f is not zero. In fact, f does not uh, lie in k. It's really a curve. Then uh, it is uh, so to show that it's not subjective. All you want is to produce. Uh, a connected etal cover of X, which has a property that when you restrict it to C, it disconnects. So then you construct the Artin-Schreier cover. Artin-Schreier uh, T to the power P minus T equals F. Uh, this is uh, connected over A2, but on C, it is disconnected. So, you raise a question, and in fact, this was the uh, contribution of this end. How could it be, how could we, re how could one prove uh, for example, the existence of companions, or even the Lin's existence of a number field capturing all the coefficients of an eladic representation. How could one prove, and then I just write dot, 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 the kind of problem we had before, using the information on curves. A 
because immediately we, we lose the reducibility and then there is no theorem if the shift is not irreducible or if it is, um, even if it is somehow simple and then, okay, so uh, let's say like this. So uh, then the idea, which is very nice, and I will finish by this. So the idea, and I, I just do the elliptic theory here because this is way easier. So the idea is to say we do not have a Lefschetz theorem, so no Lefschetz. But if we take one object, so here I forgot to say, so this, uh, the theorem of Lefschetz implies this, that uh, the etal fundamental group has the same property, but uh, we could also take the Tanaka group of connection, and then it would also subject to the Tanaka group of connection on X. So, so, so it's also a consequence of, uh, of this. Um, so we have two Lefschetz, but what we can do is, uh, if we take one representation of the target, so here this would be one, uh, one cover, so uh, no left sheds, but fix one representation of, and now I go immediately to what we want, so I, I just take the etal fundamental group in characteristic P, one representation uh, like this, which is irreducible, so let's say rho. Then, so only one, not all of them, then find a curve such that, uh, let's say curve C mapping to X, such that rho restricted to C has the same monodromic group. I mean, clearly, if you take C in an idiotic way, for example, C maps to a point here, then you are going to kill the representation. And uh, the, now the game is that there is no general Lefschetz theorem, but if you fix one object, can you find a curve which is adapted to this object? And this has a m magnificent uh, solution, which is very easy, so I take two minutes to finish. Yeah, yeah, I find a curve, so you, I don't say embedded, so uh, context of normalization. And uh, because you know, uh, to define uh, if uh, we are dealing with the etal fundamental group, so then one would have uh, to deal with the fun etal fundamental group of a non-normal curve, and this is not what we do. So, uh, and the answer goes like this, so for, for L-adic representation, so for, and then I finish with this, but uh, let me uh, finish uh, the idea here. It goes in two steps, and each of which is very nice, and this is easy, and this is really an idea of isn't. So we know that uh, this group is compact, I mean, it's a topological group, it's compact, and consequently, it uh, fixes a lattice here. So there is a lattice uh, defined over, finite, uh, over a um, finite extension of, um, of QL. So we have here, in fact, our representation here, lens, so let me write briefly, in GLR, and let me write here, um, uh, let me write here uh, Z, uh, ah, I apologize, EL, where uh, E is a number field, and uh, EL is a completion at L. At some prime above L, okay? So then we can look at the mod L reduction here. Um, ah, I forgot to say, I apologize, the completion and then 
the ring of integers, I apologize. So this defines a finite etal cover and in fact Galois. And uh, when we uh, take the inverse image of our uh, representation here on this finite etal cover, then the monodromy representation lands in the kernel of this map here. And, but the kernel of this map here is a pro L group. And now you have an easy uh, theorem on the topological group, which is telling you that if you find a curve, so this pro L group here has a pure L quotient. And because L is different from P, this pure L quotient is a finite dimensional FL vector space. And it happens when computes that the kernel of this map here, in, so clearly it is normal in this group, but then it is normal in this group. So this is what we call a characteristic subgroup, and consequently it defines for us um, a new, uh, let's say, X prime L, and here is a FL vector space as a Galois group here. And uh, one computes, and this is not hard, that uh, if we take any topological group, let's say K here, so topo or maybe uh, pi, topological group, then uh, the monodromy, the, this, uh, the map from the topological group here must compose with the representation has the same image as the monodromy group here if and only if it has the same image in the quotient of this extension of this finite group by this one. So now we are reduced to a problem on a finite group. So this is a, this is a theorem on, a, on, on pro-finite groups. So this is the first part of the, of the, this is the first step, and now the second step is to find a curve. So now we have a finite quotient of the monodromy group, and now the problem is to find a curve here, which has the property that uh, when uh, we restrict the representation to this curve, then the image pass compose with values in this finite group becomes subjective. And then the second step, now it's pure uh, geometry, it is done either, it's done by uh, Bertini, uh, by um, Hilbert irreducibility theorem. And I stop here, and uh, I'll show you, thank you.